get the right sequence of informational items, but we'll start off with uh, receiving information from county staff. And Stephen or Rose? Yeah, um, I guess I'll go first. Um, I assume everybody got the uh, stakeholder report as part of the meeting uh, minutes, the meeting notes. If not, I can share my screen if that helps. Oh yeah, I'll. I yeah. prefer you share. Okay. Let me share. This is just a document. This isn't a presentation or anything. So let me. Okay. Can everybody see uh, the document? Okay. All right. So um, first of all, good evening, everyone. Um, the uh, the first thing we have on our uh, stakeholder report here is our distinguished author series. Um, this was a, in part generously funded by Lolly, uh, but it's got some really big names. We have four separate programs. Uh, the first of uh, whom is uh, Dr. Robert Sapolsky. Um, he's a uh, biologist and neuroscientist. Um, he's actually been on the Joe Rogan podcast, if you know what that is. So he's a really big name in this sphere, and uh, he gives a great talk. So we're really looking forward to that on April 14th. Uh, we also have uh, Jaron Lanier, who does a lot of work with uh, computers and privacy issues. So, um, you know, really relevant uh, topics right now. Uh, you might net recognize uh, Joyce Carol Oates, who's a very prolific author, and she's been writing for a long time, award-winning author. Um, and also Jhumpa Lahiri, who's also a Pulitzer Prize winning author. Um, so we have four dates coming up and hopefully you'll be able to attend those. Those are all on our Zoom account. So you can watch from anywhere. The big news is uh, beginning April 19th, uh, we will be opening our door, our public spaces to patrons. So uh, all of our community libraries will be open um, and people will be able to browse. We'll maintain our six feet of distancing and masks, of course, but uh, it's a really exciting development to be able to open our doors in this way and, um, you know, hopefully come back a little bit to normal. Um, the hours will also change. Uh, there's a note there that uh, they'll be expanded and announced by April 12th, but I can tell you they're going to be Monday through Saturday from 1 to 6 p.m. So everything's pointing in the right directions, and we're really excited about that. Does anybody have any questions on that before I move on? Yeah, I do. Woodland. Yeah, Woodland. So it's our community library is not Woodland. Uh, unfortunately, we don't believe we have the the staff to to get that done just yet. And I can talk about that a little more if you'd like afterwards, um, or we can talk about it now if you prefer. When do you think you will have um, staff available for Woodland? It's hard to say. We're, I think we're going to need a lot of our uh, our DSW workers back before uh, we're able to open up Woodland. You know, we're constantly reassessing it, but um, at this point, we don't think we have the uh, a sufficient number of staff to to support the library. And then there's also some other difficulties with uh, with Woodland in that it's a smaller space, so we have some distancing issues in the staff areas that are difficult. I. Just to be clear, I'd, I'd like to get through the informational items and then perhaps uh, revisit this as part of the work plan, if that's okay with everybody. Sure, that's fine. Does that yep. work? Yep, just I'll continue on that. Yep. Just wanted to know if it was going to open, so that's all. Okay. Okay, so next up we have uh, Speaking Volumes, which is also sponsored by Lolly. Uh, and it's Bo Caldwell, who is a, you might recognize as a former author for Silicon Valley Reads uh, quite a few years back now. Um, but uh, that is on April 7th, so there's a lot of great online author events coming. Uh, for the teens, we have a teen poetry contest for the month of April, which is, of course, Poetry Month. Um, there's some information about how uh, teens can participate. Uh, they'll also be having an open mic night, which is a chance for teens to kind of get a little crazy and talk about or do, um, you know, some, some uh, entertaining, whether it be poetry or dance or any kind of talent. Um, so that's on April 16th. We also have something called uh, Teen Stream. So this is a kind of an interesting um, situation. As you can imagine, many volunteer opportunities are, are difficult to come by these days and teens have kind of been struggling to fill some of those community requirements uh, as part of their, their schooling. Um, so we've been able to create uh, an opportunity for them to create a video that's relevant to the library, uh, whether it's information about a database or a service 
Um, and with that comes credit for uh, volunteering. So um, we're really pleased that we, we were able to get, uh, get something done for the teens there. Uh, information on the JPA meeting next date is April 29th. So towards the end of the month at 12 o'clock, hopefully you can join us. That's also via Zoom. So if you need that link, just let me know. Uh, National Library Week is uh, upon us. So it's uh, April 4th through the 10th. So we'll be doing some celebrating uh, for, for that week. Um, but, but you know, I'm seeing my picture here and I'm distracted. This is of course the most important item in the stakeholder report. Uh, I, I'm officially the Deputy County Librarian and, and uh, I'm really excited to, uh, uh, to be able to take on the role um, permanently. And I, I can't wait to work with you and other commissions and um, yeah, so I think that's about all I have. So I ran through that kind of quickly and hopefully you all have a copy of this in your email. If not, I can send it to you again. Um, excuse me one second, hang on one second buddy, okay. Um, does anybody have any questions before I turn it over to Rose? Um, I, I do have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, with the reopening of the library, uh, are we going to have a more kind of uh, or more frequent cleaning service during the day or how we'll be able to ensure um, sort of the, um, the social Yeah, system. great <laughs> question. Yeah. yeah. So uh, first of all, just so you know, we're going to do a, a deep cleaning of the library before we even open. So we'll get rid of all those, uh, those cobwebs and, you know, that are probably outside the windows in, in the library right now. And we'll get the interior looking really great um, and be ready to go by April 19th. Um, but more specifically, in an answer to your question, we are working with the janitorial staff about how often we clean things and when we clean them. And so the, the short answer is yes, we're still working on a, on a plan for that, but uh, it is an item that we're taking under consideration. And I also want to add, we have a janitor working during all open hours. So the janitors will be cleaning um, regularly while we have patrons um, and staff in the building. Okay, and also I would assume we'll have uh, a sort of uh, 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 probably free masks and uh, all equipped with all the hygiene supplies at the entrance or throughout the whole library. Yeah, so uh, we do have, we have hand sanitizers all throughout the library. Uh, we'll have masks for people who need them. So yeah, we'll have all the PPE ready to go. Okay. Okay, and the, the staff are okay? Have they all been vaccinated? Well, so every, um, every employee has been offered the vaccine, so we can't make them take it, but um, I would imagine the vast majority have done so. In fact, I got my last one on, my second one on Friday, so I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Sure. Anything else? Okay, I'll turn it over to Rose. Let me stop sharing. Oh, I did. Right, thank you, Steve. I'm going to share my screen now. All right, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so let me see here. Okay, so yeah, so we are excited to have Steve. Um, if you don't know, he did used to work at Los Altos, so um, it's nice to have somebody um, who has worked at the, li at the library that we, I manage because I could always ask him for tips and information. So it's been very helpful in that sense. Um, so in addition to what Steve added, I want to add some local information. Um, let me go back here. So as you know, lobby service did resume on March 8th. Um, it's been going really well. Uh, we had, we've had Holt pick up um, browsing of high interest collections, the book bundles, which we plan on continuing actually starting um, once we open the whole building. They've been very popular. The friends um, have resumed their book sales and their um, online sales, which are um, seem to be going very well. And um, we have computer access in the orchard room as well as long as, as well as tax forms. So um, it doesn't, you know, we were allowing a limited capacity in the, in the lobby for patrons to come in and um, you know it doesn't seem like the lines have been very long people have been coming in and out pretty quickly and respecting the time limit um, and and have enjoyed uh, really being back to um, what 
you know, to getting their holds and seeing the staff and um, visiting the library. So once we open the whole building, I think um, it'll be more exciting for everybody. And our, our reference staff are really excited to get back to, um, you know, seeing the patrons and helping with reference questions as needed. Um, so our statistics for March are have increased quite a bit. So um, it's very exciting. You'll see every category has increased um, patrons served, checked out and returned items. So that's really exciting to see our patrons are coming back to the library, are using our, our resources and I'm excited to see what will happen once we open on um, April 19th. So um, this is um, our data so far for March. Um, and um, I know Steve talked about Bo Caldwell, uh, both Bo Caldwell and uh, Dr. Sapolsky are LOLI sponsored. And so we're very grateful that they have uh, sponsored these programs for the um, system, as well as the other authors, which are, um, are listed here. And I know Steve went into them, so I don't want to spend too much time on them. Um, some other programs that we have are, um, we have a STEAM, um, STEAM Club program um, to make catapults. So that's going on right now. Um, in addition to the, Steve did talk about the um, open mic. And we also have a travel program um, about Southwestern England. And so the information for that and to register is just included in this presentation and also on the report that Jamie sent out. Uh, so as we are in orange tier, did, Steve did say we are um, expanding our hours, um, you know, we are prioritizing, you know, a safe environment for patrons and staff, um, while our, our staff are also, some of them are disaster service workers, or the, some of the staff from Woodland are also at other libraries um, helping out where there, um, there is a, a need for them to help out. So um, that's all I have so far. Um, if anybody has any other questions, um, I'm happy to answer them about the library. You have the... Um computers set out uh, spaced social, either six foot space in the uh, orchard room? Yes, we ah. have two of them right now. So there's the two of them in that big room. Oh, okay, great. And Thank there's you. a printing service, free, uh, free printing for up to 25 pages. Okay, super. So, yes, and also once we do open, uh, I forgot to mention, we won't be quarantining materials um, uh, due to uh, new data and research that we found out from um, the county and just from data from um, other sources. So the materials will not be quarantined anymore. And also our automatic returns machine will be turned on. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, uh, what about the uh, story time and uh, the activities? Are we going to open to in-person as well? Not at this time. Yeah, we don't feel that um, it's just safe enough to do it. Uh, everything is going to continue virtually. Um, and I think once uh, we get the um, go from the county, um, we'll make plans to do that. But we don't have plans at this time to do that. Let me, can I ask a question, Rose? Sure. When, when in-person starts again, when it resumes, will you also continue with Zoom availability so that there's both? Because um, what I've found is I'm able to attend an awful lot more meetings uh, by because of Zoom than if I had to go in person. Uh, you know, the drive for one thing is eliminated. And I'm just wondering if um, it could be shared by Zoom as well, you know, as a, an option, as well as having in people there in person going yeah, forward standard. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we haven't, I don't think we've talked about that yet. Um, and we, I could definitely bring that up when we do talk about um, the in-person programs. I, you have a great point. It does eliminate quite a bit of time for everybody to have it available, even have it recorded or available to view at a later time if possible too. Yeah, that's true, yeah. I just think it just opens up so much more availability to yeah. people who are, are unable to, to make it there in person. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is Julie. 
Sorry, this is Julie. I had a question. When the when the when when they decided to open this up, was there some sort of data that they relied on to to open this up? And it, and I, I say that because my company is looking at that. They're looking at data, certainly infection rates. And so I'm wondering, will we have more of an idea about when we can go to in person uh, uh, events, other than we you know n not knowing. You know, I, I I know that we are going by the tiers, just like the county, but for the um, in-person, I don't know, Steve, do you have any more information about that? Because um, it's not something um, that we're going to do an orange tier, but I don't know if it's coming in the other tiers. Yeah, I, I can tell you, we, you know, we're, we're following state and, and uh, local guidelines, so as of now, indoor meetings are kind of discouraged, so we're, we're kind of adhering to that. As to when that'll change, I don't know if that's actually tied to a tier. Um, I, I know there is, like you can do, I think it's like 25% in a conference room or something like that, which isn't really all that helpful right now. But um, as far as like larger gatherings, we're just going by, by what they're telling us. And right now is not the time to do that, but we do want to open that up as soon as we can. And going back to um, uh, Commissioner Wheeler's comments about whether or not we would be able to do uh, some more Zoom programming, even when we're like, back to normal or, or whatever that is. We actually have been looking at that and we're kind of seeing like a hybrid model where we can do a little of both. So that, um, you know, for some of our events, probably not all of them, but for, for our, our bigger events, maybe do uh, something where we're recording with a live audience uh, at the same time. So it's a kind of a combination of the two. But we have gotten a lot of positive feedback about uh, our online programming, specifically our story time. So almost right from the get-go. So we kind of had that mentality and we're, we're doing some planning for that. So hopefully we'll be ready by um, you know, pretty, pretty soon to be able to do um, you know, that, that hybrid model once we're allowed to have in-person services back again. Great. Did I answer both your questions or? Thank you. I, I mean, this is this is Julie. I would like a little more specificity if there is some out there. So if you have that, that would be great. Um, but for now, that's fine. Yeah, I, I haven't seen a whole lot of uh, information about when that would happen. They just keep saying don't don't have large large gatherings right now, and um, they do allow for some smaller gatherings, but they're they're hardly they're hardly what we'd be looking for in person services in, in, in a library. Thank you. Sure. Um, I, I have a comment and also a question. Uh, I actually, uh, I found that the, recently, I think the library started offering LinkedIn training on the courses. I think that seems like a very good uh, service. Uh, I'm hoping, you know, if there's any flyer or anything that we can uh, promote it, uh, that would be great. Uh, and then my question is, I think the summer, uh, is right around the corner. Uh, do we have a summer uh, program lineup for um, for the children, for the kids? Yeah, actually, we have a summer reading program for all age groups, but that will be rolling out pretty soon. Uh, the planning has already been done for that. They're just finalizing some details, but uh, we'll be doing all the, you know, all the outreach to schools just virtually this time and, and uh, trying to get them to participate. And there'll be prizes and challenges and you know, everything that we usually do just just online okay <laughs> and I'm, I'm sorry what was the first part to your question too uh i said the linkedin training I, oh yes in courses been offered uh i think that's a great program i just feel like we need to promote more yeah yeah that used to be um oh boy the name is escaping me right now they they were recently bought Linda. out by linkedin what was it do you remember linda.com Thank you, Lynda.com. Thank you, Cindy. You're um, yeah, so they were they were bought out by LinkedIn. Um, so we do have some, at least some older uh, publicity for that. I don't know if they have anything with the new LinkedIn model, but um, I'm sure I can find something for you. And um, of course, we'll we'll publicize it as much as we can to our patrons as well. But you're right; they have some great great programs. Ying, we did a um, a lot. The awareness committee did a. Uh, one of the monthly ads was on lynda.com, the one that Lolly sponsors. We did one on Lynda, but it was before it was bought out, so. 
Okay. Yeah. I okay, thank you. Good. Any uh, other questions? Uh, I have one. I've actually used, uh, well, or a comment. I've actually used the, uh, what used to be Safari that just got bought by O'Reilly and got through one of the texts. And I mean, the Safari, I tried do, using Safari prior to the O'Reilly acquisition. It, it wasn't usable. I mean, the O'Reilly uh, series actually kept track of where I was in the book when I signed back in and uh, it quite usable. And I think you've upped the level on Linda too, uh, across the board. So kudos for that. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, uh, we let, I, I'm going to go back to the agenda real quick. Thank you, uh, staff. Uh, and we'll have some more discussion, I'm sure, coming up. But we'd like to receive information from the friends of the library, the very generous friends. <laughs> OK. Um, well, we haven't had our board meeting um, yet. So a lot of this is repeat. But um, the two things we're going to be focusing on is, is one, with the news about the library, is how to get donations going again. Um, of course, as soon as those doors are open, people are going to want to bring their, their books from home. So that we'll be talking about that next week um, in our operations meeting. And also to get um, some sales going, book sales in May, at, um, probably the end of May, maybe even June. So we'll see um, how to get that going again since people are raring to go and get out and do regular normal stuff. Um, any questions for me? <laughs> I, it's me again. Um, I, I like the, um, I think your online uh, display of the books of the inventories, uh, but I'm wondering uh, if uh, you're going to consider uh, a local pickup, like sell online and the local pickup Type of thing? Well, uh, currently, if you buy um, on our bookshelf website, um, you pick up at the holds desk. Okay, but I thought like you have an Amazon um, or oh, whatever, Amazon. one. Um, no, Amazon, we have a required, we have to go through their shipping um, procedure. So that's another reason why we open bookshelves so we could do local sales or, you know, local pickup. We aren't, we aren't, there's a lot of restrictions when you sell on Amazon and um, it's just easier to just go with the program there instead of trying to work around it. Sorry. Okay. But if you, you know, if you have a specific book that you really want to have and pick up, you know, I don't know, maybe we could, could, Give me a call and tell me what book it is, and we could take it offline and sell it to you some other way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 I understand. But, but again, I'm not trying to create more work. I just felt like if we promote your sort of online inventory, and then you know, it's probably environmentally friendly, you know, instead mm -hmm. of shipping, and then we just pick up from the library. No, no, no. I hear you. That's you no. Know. <laughs> It would be simpler and more economically or, you know, environmentally friendly, but check the bookshelf, you know, see if there's anything there first and then come to the book sale. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Catherine, my husband went down and made a, a, don a book donation. Um, and so I, I showed him a map of the civic center, where to go what the times were and he drove over there found somebody uh -huh. they're waiting it was absolutely perfect so that was, uh, yeah it worked well he donated okay. two boxes he was so happy <laughs> <laughs> good i'm glad it worked out yeah we have to figure out what to do that would actually that model has worked very well people are very happy to just drive up and we help them get it out of their trunk and they drive off mm -hmm. so the Question is, do we want to open that closet again? That's, that's a big question. Or do we want to, you know, maybe um, 
just do more, you know, more regular, you know, every Wednesday, Saturday, have these drop off donation things. And or, um, so we'll be, if you guys have an opinion on that, I'm, I'd love to hear what you think. My only opinion on this whole thing is that you should be charging for the donations <laughs> because it's that popular. I mean, hearing the desperation in people's voice, mm -hmm. voices to, to donate their books, mm -hmm. they would pay mm -hmm. if, given, if only given the opportunity. That's well, all know, I've got to say. Yeah. Well, you know, I know I, you said that a couple times and, um, you know, maybe if we had this drive up service where we take it out of your trunk for you, maybe we could charge for that. But, you know, we, we would feel bad charging people <laughs> to get there. I, I, have an, I have just a preference on which way to do it. Mm -hmm. I like the closet because it was always you, you you didn't have to make an appointment you didn't you weren't constrained by time you know you could just go and drop them off so that was the most convenient although i do understand that you know everybody's going to understand that things have changed so if you decide that it needs to be done on certain days and certain times, people are going to understand that. And not I don't think that's going to be a problem at all. But I loved just being able to go. Well, but, we did too. I mean, it was very convenient to just have people go in there by themselves and just drop it off. Right. Yeah. So we'll eventually get back to that. But maybe, you know, in the meantime, through this transition period, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll talk about it next week. It, well, the drop driving um, to the shed and dropping them off, that was easy. It was, that was, that's a great alternative. Okay. Any other questions from anyone? For Catherine? Thank you, Catherine, very much. Mm -hmm. It is odd to, you're attending our meeting first before board meeting, but I will see you soon. So it is. You know, it, hey, oh, it's the way oh, the calendar I drops. I should have a lot more to report next month. There's a lot going on. Yes. And next is uh, uh, an update from the NCLA. Hi, Cindy. Hello. Uh, NCLA met in February, I believe it was. I can't, the time just goes by. Um, and we agreed on on how to get reimbursed with the city of Los Altos for funds that were due to NCLA. So that's going forward. And we also now have, I think we will probably have the attorney from Los Altos Hills be the attorney for NCLA. He is going through a um, conflict of interest review to see if he can do that, but he's very interested in participating, which is fantastic. Um, we do need to have those eagle eyes and legal eagle eyes on some of the decisions that we discuss. So I'm looking forward to that decision. And we will be meeting in May. The date is to be determined. However, we know that it will be on a Monday. So just look at your Mondays in May and one of those dates will be the, the, um, the meeting date. The main topic will be the budget because that's our annual review of the budget, which is really a very simple um, transaction because right now we're not spending much of any money and we just want to make sure that we have we know what's going to be coming in and start looking at what we might um, have go out i did ask to have the main library and the woodland library put on the agenda for conversation to see if and when ncla will have an appetite to start up that discussion around the town again and you may have seen that the uh, Los Altos City Council approved having a nonpartisan, um, non council driven session or um, cycle with anybody who's interested in, in designing and planning for a theater in Los Altos. So I want to watch that model and see how that goes forward. So, and they have a due date of getting things finished by. I think the end of 2021, um, or they, I can't remember, it was 
it was late at the, late in the evening and I can't, don't remember all the details of it, but it's a model for us to take a look at. And you may have seen the, the request for volunteers in the town crier's electronic version. Uh, switching over to Lolly, you've already heard about speaking volumes, which is next Wednesday, and I will send everybody an invitation so that you can sign up for it. And then we also do have the Dr. Sapolsky event the next week, and we're both of those we're very excited to be sponsoring and looking forward to high attendance and interest from the community. We, uh, Lolly's meeting is also next, no, our, our meeting is the 15th of April, whatever that second Tuesday is. So it's, it's beyond this meeting. So I don't have anything to report that's not over a month old. So any questions? All right, back to you, Pierre. Thank you. Um, and with that, uh, Jamie, city staff receiving information and announcements. You're muted, Jamie. Haha, -ha. that would be helpful if I unmute myself. Um, uh, this one has been a labor of love, um, only because this was one of the main projects that I've been uh, working on um, since the start of last year. And that is that we're launching a brand new recreation management software. Um, the one that we had previously um, was extremely dated and it had some challenges, uh, not only on the staff side, but the public facing side. It was just not as user friendly as we would have liked. So we are super excited um, that we launched on March 22nd. Um, we chose Civic Rec under Civic Plus. Um, and what we love about it is that it's a, um, a web-based platform um, that is user friendly. Um, if you can Google search something, um, it is very intuitive um, as far as how you utilize the software. So um, we had, and I think this was kind of an ideal time to both implement and then to launch because we're um, not in our normal time frame where we have a ton of classes and offerings. Um, and so we're getting kind of a, a smaller launch and we can work through some of the, um, the issues that always uh, tend to pop up when you start something new, but things have actually been going really well. So we're very excited about that. And then uh, spring programs, similar with our launch, uh, we launched it with the opening of our spring uh, season. And so that is going strong. And if you're interested in checking out um, what we have to offer, that is on the website and obviously on our new software system. And I did include the links if you wanted to check out the classes. And then I always include our virtual recreation center. Um, that was um, a labor of love over last year, um, putting together uh, various um, uh, just activities and resources that people could utilize. Um, so that is still there on our website too. Um, and then the next one is uh, we did pivot to a virtual offering for our uh, egg, egg extravaganza event. Normally we have um, a, an egg hunt, but unfortunately we're not able to do that in person this year. So it turned into a virtual event where people at the community can decorate an egg and submit a photo of that to be displayed on the city's website. So that, um, and most people have submitted. And so if you wanted to check out all the creativity that has been submitted so far, um, you can do that. And I did include the link there as well. And then as always, um, just resources and information, um, the city continually updates their COVID-19 um, uh, webpage. And so we have lots of uh, resources and our staff um, continue to man the uh, just resource hotlines so that if people need um, access to resources, we can help get them connected. Um, so that is it for us. Questions, commissioners? No, I did. I did see the programming, I, and I, I did want to know if the summer stuff for the kids was virtual or in person 
Okay. Oh, great question. And it is a combination. So um, similar to the information that the, uh, the library staff shared, um, most of our in-person programming is outdoors. We are not currently doing any indoor in-person programming at this point. So it is kind of a hybrid model where we're doing, um, and we're finding that interest in registration is definitely much higher for the outdoor in-person. Um, we are getting some with our virtual, but I think, um, and especially to beautiful weather, people are wanting to um, get out and uh, get back to in-person. And I actually sat on a few um, of meetings with just uh, colleagues in other um, organizations and cities, and they're finding that their registration in the um, in-person outdoor is just very popular, um, I think, because people want that opportunity to, um, to participate. So that's what we're finding as well. But it is going to continue to be a hybrid at this point. Thank you. Any other questions, commissioners? Uh, I had one, which is the new Civic Rec software going to include um, does that include the scheduling for the community center or? Great question. And the, an the simple answer is yes. Um, at this point, we're only doing um, kind of class registration. So that's the only kind of module that's currently launched and available right now. Um, eventually we will, um, when we get hopefully to do um, gatherings and rentals of that nature, there is a module that we'll be launching so that people will have um, the ability to res uh, request a reservation um, and uh, be able to process it through the system. Um, but at this point, uh, we've canceled things through April. We're still um, trying to take a look at what that might look like going into the summer. Um, but it will include um, access to the community center as well. Like, as a for instance, let's say the friends wanted to do a big sale in the community center. How might they affect that and get that scheduled? No, absolutely. There are quite a few um, just uh, interest in finding out what is available. Um, and so at this point, um, and that's a great question. The uh, community center, I actually got a, a tour on site for myself on, uh, with uh, a few other staff members um, on Tuesday, and it is progressing fairly uh, well. Um, still some work to be done, um, but again, it's slated to be done um, midsummer. So um, uh, roughly in the June, July timeframe. So, um, at this point, we're, um, there's been quite a few groups that have just inquired what that process will be. And so um, it's definitely reaching out to our staff. We actually, um, if, they, if individuals or groups are interested, they can submit an application and we kind of dig it and stamp it. But given, I was just, and this is a question also sort of to Rose, is given our preference our, or the preferential treatment that we should be getting, from the city, do we have any linkages uh, that are good <laughs> between Rose? You know, like does Rose do, do Rose's people talk to the city people to get? You know, will she be able to schedule things in the community center that may not have fit in the orchard room or for what? You know what I mean? Do we get some kind of preference? And when and when I think we should. <laughs> <laughs> no, great question. Um, and so uh, the process that I kind of mentioned before, that's kind of the, the general um, process that we've been following. But to your point about what that priority is going to be, um, and that's something that we've been working quite a bit on, um, just looking at what that opening is going to look like. Similar to, um, I think, what the library is looking at, what is that opening going to be and what capacity and kind of what activities are going to be going on. Because um, we have not done um, kind of indoor um, oh. activities quite yet. And so we're trying to figure out what that 
timeline is going to be. So we're still working on the details for that. I'm not worried about the timeline. I'm just saying eventually everything will be normal and back to normal. We want to make sure that, you know, we have the priority. That's all. But thank you. No, that is definitely noted. And we are um, trying to work out what that, um, what that priority, because there were many, many community groups um, that utilized Hillview. And so looking, um, this is definitely our time to kind of figure out what, what makes current sense. And so we're, we're working through that. But none so distinctive as a friend's. None so great. <laughs> Anyway, but thank you very much. I pre no, I, I know you guys are really working through a lot of stuff and thank you very much for thinking about it. No, I appreciate the questions and it keeps us, um, it validates, you know, that what we're currently working on is what we do need to figure out and make sure that that is um, disseminated as well so that uh, the various groups and um, individuals know how to access those resources from the community. Cool. Thank you. So with that, uh, if there's no more questions, then let's go to the items for consideration and action today. Be the first one being our minutes. Um, does anyone want to make a motion? I move that we accept the minutes of the <laughs> meeting of uh, Thursday, March 4th. Second, I'll second. Roll, Jamie. All right, we'll go ahead and start with Commissioner Carter. Yes. And we'll go to Commissioner Chan. Okay, uh, seeing an okay from her. Uh, Commissioner Crane. Yes. And yes. Thank you. And Commissioner G. Oh, I think. Melvin. Melvin. I think he might be frozen. <laughs> <laughs> he had a tough night. He really. <laughs> uh, we will come back to uh, Commissioner G. Um, Commissioner Lou. Yes. And Vice Chair Wheeler. Yes. And Chair Bedard. I. Okay. Um, if we eventually get Nelvin back, I can double check with you. <laughs> oh, I no, think you, got there he is. <laughs> you got my text. You all right, Nelvin? Just got it. Yeah, it, my, uh, it keeps saying my internet connection is not stable. So oh, I'm not okay. sure. oh, that's why you were stuck. Yeah. And now then, um, Commissioner G, are you a yay or a nay on the passing of the minutes? Uh, I am a yay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So let's move on to the next uh, item, the work plan. And as part of this item, I want to share something with everybody. Uh, hopefully it'll work out and I will share something of value. And if not, oh my God. <laughs> oh, here's the mid pen post. But let's go here. What I've done is created a website yeah. where I've taken the different things that we've all created. Uh, the awareness subcommittee exhibits. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Can you, am I sharing? Okay. Yeah. So it start. there's a slider with each one of the reports. Uh, if you look at these, oh, who, what's that? Something about Woodland? Oh my God. <laughs> that was my few lots of crap. <laughs> and under, so you click on this. And underneath what you'll find is basically, hopefully a header, what we did, and then the actual work plan or the document. 
that you can download and look at. I don't know if you see that, but anyway, uh, I put this together. I don't know, you know, it's there for comment. I will send you the link. Um, and the concept was to actually make our work plan more visual. And for instance, put things like Melvin's project. So this makes us a little bit more accessible. Um, you know, I'm willing for comments or whatever, but I really wanted to bring the work plan alive with uh, tangible things. So, Jamie, is it possible to put this a uh, link to, I mean, um, first, I guess someone from the city would have to look at it and bless it. Okay, his, his um, especially since it's Pierre. <laughs> but if the city blessed it, could, could uh, there be a link to it on the library commission page? No, absolutely. Um, Pierre has, uh, and as you said, was going to share information, currently working on that process. Um, but as far as um, setting up links to the, on the city website, that is absolutely a possibility. It's just working through um, kind of how that uh, relationship will work. Right. But it looks great, Pierre. Looks really nice. Uh, there was one more thing I wanted to show you very quickly. Um, and this had to do more with, um, sorry, I've got the video right on top of it. I also have the librarian reports already loaded. Uh, so, so, I mean, I was, I was easily able to get what was presented today when, and bring that up and bring it in. Pierre, can you share the URL? Is it just library.bedard.com? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to yeah. share it with our, my team at the library if that's okay. Okay. And then I actually, Oh, you won't be able to see this, but if you click under library ideas it, for whatever, just ignore this. I have a, um, I've got like a newsletter I put out that goes and searches out different um, news items about libraries, for lack of a better term. And um, that just, you know, repopulates and, and comes up with different stuff. Like if you go there now, there's an article about how Amazon is, you know, the Amazon article I sent out, things like that. It's a good way to stay up to date in the latest technologies and see what's going on. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show people tonight uh, with regards to, uh, to that. I don't know that there are any reviews and updates to the work plan as it stands that anyone wants to bring up. Going once, going twice. So with that, let's go into commissioners' reports and comments. And we got there before 7.30. I, good work, team. That's great. Uh, so infrastructure subcommittee. OK, we just met Tuesday. And um, we had a, a discussion about the Woodland Branch. And we concluded that, um, well, first I wanted to let you know that I did get some cost figures, cost estimates from um, a company for modular units, pre-built modular units. And they range from a bare bones of about $250,000 to, you know, all the bells and whistles, including, um, you know, bathrooms, everything, everything, everything for uh, uh, $450,000. But, so that 
you know, in my initial thought was that would be a lot cheaper than trying to build something. But my, but we discussed it and we have uh, concluded that because of staffing issues in particular, that it would be smarter to try to remove as many obstacles as possible to making this a reality. And to do that, we're now thinking that it would be smarter to build three walls to extend the current building, knock down the wall that is adjacent to that big empty field area, and so expand it that way and have the, the expansion be all glass walls internally so that the existing library staff could see into all of the, in, into all of the area of the expansion. That way, and, and you know, Rose and Brian both explained to us that, um, you know, they need to be able to see what's going on. And obviously that makes sense. The teen room could be all glass so that you could see exactly what they were doing. And then the meeting rooms could be glass. And because they would be, uh, you know, depending on who would be in those, in the meeting room and calling it like a community room was a suggestion that Rose came up with, which is a great idea that could be divided Depending on who's in there, you could either, um, you know, have uh, some sort of, let's call it uh, Venetian blinds or some sort of, they even have, they even have glass now where you just touch the button and it becomes um, uh, opaque, so you can't see in it. Um, that way, you could have an expansion hopefully not require additional staff, and that would work better. Um, Carol Sun is an architect, and he had given us some figures, uh, cost per square foot figures of a just bare bones, you know, electric and HVAC, including site preparation of 350 square foot Per square feet, per, per square foot, and then you t see the the cost estimates for building a house addition, and there are about six hundred dollars a square foot. And Nelvin pointed out that our library uh, expansion, when we were going to build a new library, it was forty thousand square feet, and it was for forty million dollars. So the city, the price tag for building something for the city appears to be $1,000 a square foot. But when you look at, and Brian also explained to me that wood, the Woodland Branch is 5,000 square foot. So if we talk about an expanded area of about 2,500 to 3,000 square feet, we figured that, at um, just at 3,000 square feet, it's it's a, a million fifty if it's three thousand three hundred and fifty square uh, three hundred dollars per square foot. It'd be one point eight million if it were six hundred per square foot, and obviously it'd be three million if it were the thousand dollars per square foot. But um, in the general scheme of things, $3 million is not a huge amount of money. It's not an insurmountable barrier or obstacle. And I think especially if you were looking at uh, fundraising opportunities uh, to try to pick up a lot of that cost, it might actually be something uh, that's very doable. So. What we're going to do now is revise the plans, uh, do a 2,500 and a 3,000 square foot um, model or uh, plan. 
and then um, and then bring that forward. Uh, Cindy suggested that it might be um, good to uh, meet with NCLA and just uh, apprise them of this and and see you know just to let them know and see what they might want from us uh, more information etc to uh, perhaps be interested in it um, but that's where we are on that and um, Nelvin is uh, we're we're all looking at the patron surveys to see what what else service wise might we need to look at uh, additional projects. Nelvin, Carol, anything else to add for the infrastructure? Well, we were we had talked about uh, parking limitations. That was passed. Okay. So that, what's that, that actually passed at the last council and it's gone to staff. Yeah. Oh. Jamie, do you have any update for us on where that is? I am currently working on what that process is. I'm hoping to bring that back at the next meeting. Oh, great. Thank you. The town crier did announce that they're starting to uh, tag cars downtown. April 1, today. Today. Yeah, there hasn't been any parking enforcement during this pandemic because there weren't any. Or any parking, any cars in the parking lot. <laughs> Are there any other questions, Carol, Melvin? Yeah, um, I never did have a chance to take a look at the parking situation at Woodland, and the first time I actually spent any time there was uh, yesterday when I went over and measured the wall and the dimension, of the length of the from the wall to the fence. Um, there aren't that many parking spots. Has that been an issue for that branch? Yes, and there are opportunities for parking. As a matter of fact, uh, Catherine, you, you know, Carol, the, the area that you identified for parking, the friends identified that area for parking and Catherine sent me um, uh, an overhead view of the Woodland site with that with there there's an area north of the current diagonal parking that could be expanded and additional parking added and that that is one option uh nelvin the other option that i wanted to see about there is just 25 foot setbacks and since a good deal of that open field area would not be taken up with the expanded building, I think there's a possibility to have um, one row of uh, parking there as well. Mm. And you know, Catherine, Catherine mentioned that no matter what happens with Woodland, that, par that additional parking would really be a plus. Uh, Jamie, I have a question uh, that has been, I have a, a, something that has been bothering me. I want to uh, know the uh, origin of the Woodland Branch. How did the city get that land and what are the, the uh, stipulations, if any, about the use of the land? Can you find that information for us? I asked Cindy for that and oh, Cindy. Cindy, okay. I had asked Cindy because I figured she would know. Okay. So I don't yet have that information, uh, Carol, but uh, Jennifer Weeks and a few other people are doing some digging for me. Um, I do know that the, um, the county paid for the library to be built um, many, many years ago. And I don't know where the land came from. But one thing that I did uncover in looking is that one of the big issues was parking and also the closeness to neighbors. So I think that that's one of the barriers that we're going to have to address is the, the noise level of being closer to the, cause, uh, to the neighbors because that library is surrounded by houses. Yes. Uh, well, 
was uh, what I'm curious about is was the land a gift to the city or did the city I don't know I don't know and that's what we're looking into oh yes because it would be I think useful to have that information <clears throat> sure Yeah, it's interesting to just understand how we got that library branch. Right. And also, just as a reminder, we used to have a lot more parking for Woodland. It was street parking, but when they put in the bicycle lanes for the children to get to school, it took away the parking. Those pesky kids. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> And we want them to use the library. Oh my goodness, what are we thinking? <laughs> they just shouldn't come on their bicycles, I guess. <laughs> so the, the, my, I'll broach the woodland issue now from the way I see it anyway, is that first and foremost, we've got to get some services going out of there symbolically. Um, shutting down the Woodland Branch. Every library meeting, and Rose, you've been at the same meetings I've been at. Somebody, you know, except this one remarkably, someone from the public comes and makes a comment that, what are you doing about opening up Woodland? We're already at, you know, Orange. Uh, why can't we go in there? We can go into retail, blah, 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 et cetera. And I know that we can't open until we're safe, but there's got to be something symbolically we can do uh, to help it out because Woodland, you know, there's Woodland now and Woodland tomorrow and then Woodland remodeled or Woodland where we go to really build it. Um, and that's the kind of planning I think we need to have, but the, we need a win on Woodland somehow. I, I don't know what that is. I'm not the guy who determines what that is, but, um, you know, it would be really a nice message to have it open up when the schools are full up. Because ironically, Freddie's first report was about noise created by school kids, a problem that I think everybody wants right now. But yep. we can't have. <laughs> So, you know, we can riff off that and try to do what we can do. There's also, I mean, in my mind, and this is to Cindy, uh, you know, the NCLA has money for, has 50K, I know, for, you know, for COVID relief that could be, that could go into this. It's not millions, but, you know, the NCLA is there for the inhabitants, not just to- Exactly, that, that was why I recommended that um, this library commission talk to NCLA about how much it would would NCLA be interested in funding some or all of it and if so how much and what would be the process for making that request because exactly. if you look at the NCLA joint agreement um, it's very clear that it is for services and, and building and other resources and the staff issue Cindy also yes was kind enough to explain to me that if staff is an issue with an expanded woodland, that NCLA could potentially address that as well. That so. is how, um, and that is how our libraries first got expanded hours was through the NCLA funding those hours both at Woodland and then over to the main library. Yeah. So I think this is a, I, I, you know, we want to have the proposal pretty well in, in, better shape than my hand-drawn drawings. Um, uh, but I want to have something nice and more professional to propose, you know, to present to them. But yeah, I am very grateful to you, Cindy, for pointing out that that might be an avenue for, for funds for not only the building, but for the, for the staff right. that might be needed to, to, um, to make the expansion possible. True. It's it's still a decision that the county makes on whether or not they can staff it, but if funding is the main roadblock, then the funding could come from NCLA. Okay. I could learn to be a part-time librarian. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> you start tomorrow. <laughs> what a scary thought that would be. <laughs> 
you know, I do have a question. I, you know, I remember uh, the last commission meeting I went to, you guys kind of touched on the possibility of expanding Woodland also. And I'm wondering, like, what, what's kind of, what's, what's driving this? Was there a study that was done to uh, indicate that we wanted to expand the library or did that so, come out of some, yeah. So Steve, what happened was um, in my very first few days as a library commissioner, um, <clears throat> One of the city council members asked me to go to a senior senior me meeting over at Grant Park. Mm -hmm. And she introduced me around as the new library commissioner. And I was just mobbed by all the, the seniors who said, we want to talk to you about Woodland Library. We can't use it. It's impossible to use it because the kids make so much noise over there. Can you do something about it? So I went and studied my scientific study. I went over there and watched and observed what happens. And the kids from St. Simon's go there after school. And it's a very small space, as you well know. Um, there's tutors there who are tutoring kids. They make noise. And it, because it's such a small space, uh, it's very disruptive for people who just want to sit and work or, or sit and read. And so um, I was, I, I already made a proposal and Chris Brown got that proposal of uh, trying to make a soundproofed area of, of the section that is over by the, the stacks, you know, in, in, uh, All on the opposite side of the entrance. Yeah. And, you know, take soundproof walls. You know, there's new soundproof materials. And apparently, you know, working with Rose, she said that Chris had even attended some soundproof materials conference or something and, and learned about these soundproof walls and barriers. But to try to soundproof off one area and use that for the adults. Because as you know, the part that's right in front of the, um, the service desk is for the kids. You know, it's all little kids' chairs. The kids, that's where mm -hmm. the tutoring is. Little kids are there. And then um, because um, I thought, well, the kids, the teenage kids, they go in and out of the back door to the back patio. And the door makes a tremendous amount of noise too. So the seniors were also complaining about the noise, the kids going in and out, in and out, in and out. And I thought, well, you know, if you look at the main library, there's a teen room there. Maybe the, you know, the real solution is to just make this library bigger, not huge bigger, but bigger so that the kids can have a space where they can go and make noise and other people, the adults can have a space in the existing library that's quiet where they can work and read and do whatever they do. And that would be the best of all worlds and have another meeting room because all we have is the orchard room. And that's not enough. I mean, it's just not enough. And it's in South Los Altos. So it would be someplace in South Los Altos for meeting meeting, you know, the community organizations could meet. So that's what morphed into the Freddie Wheeler Memorial Expansion. <laughs> Which is documented on yeah. librarybedard.bedard.com. I've seen the plaque already, so. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, it's just something that I just think would be wonderful to have. Yeah, the other thing that Rose has always told me was she has more kids programs than she could schedule. If you had a whole nother room where you could schedule kids programs and for the South Los Altos side of town, wouldn't that be great? Hmm. Steve? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I, I, I want to, <laughs> hmm, I want to, hmm. One of our, <laughs> one of our issues. enthusiasm required. <laughs> One of our issues with subcommittees is that we're all talking about this, but we never talk about it together except in this big group. 
And yeah, because we that, have the Brown Act problem, which I'm sure. hoping Jamie will get to. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, but so anyway, that's how this came to, this whole expansion of Woodland came to be, is because the use of this small space by seniors and kids isn't working. One group is unhappy and it's the seniors, mm. the adults. Okay. <laughs> I'll have to think about that. You know, you know, another question I have was, um, I, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but I used to work in Los Altos. I was actually, um, Cindy knows this. Yeah, I, I worked at a class as the uh, community librarian for a brief time. It must be about six years ago now. Um, I know at the time, and, and, and I know periodically it comes up that the, you know, the city investigates whether or not they can, you know, they want to build a new library, right? Mm -hmm. a, new, a new central community library. And I was just wondering, what, is there any momentum on that right now, or is that not being discussed at all, or is it just? Cindy, that's you. It is me. <laughs> just, so, just curious. So yes, Steve, and there, uh, there, ha there was a two-year process to evaluate whether or not we could come up with the funding to have the city build out a library. And we put it on hiatus when COVID hit. I we see. had been hoping to take it to ballot in 2020. Um, in the in November election, but in June, we decided that, that it was not the right time because of everybody, the economy, the pandemic, the election, everything just was not working in our favor. So that's what I'm going to be bringing forward to NCLA at, at our May meeting is, when is it time to start this again? Gotcha, okay. Thank and you, that bro. was supported by NCLA, the Library Commission, the Friends, and the um, Lolly. So all four of those library, strongly library connected organizations were behind it and were represented on the task force in addition to other um, community volunteers from Los Altos Hills and Los Altos. Thank you. We would love to see a new library, We, you know, we would love and to. during that, yeah. yes, and during that two year time, we had many questions about what are we going to do about Woodland? So, and it wasn't just from people in South Los Altos. There were, there's a, there's a very strong interest about Woodland Library being updated, connected, whatever. So, and we run into a lot of positive and also um, other concerns about both libraries. Sure. I, I and mean, I will be giving an update in May at the Library Commission meeting about the history of the, these last two years. So be sure to attend. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. will be riveting. <laughs> <laughs> I need to catch up. It's a must attend session. I think that does it for the Infrastructure Committee. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> services Regina has plenty to say <laughs> I think we met once uh, we met with Rose uh, I don't know where we left it I mean one of the big things was looking at the woodland stuff um, you know, what services are being made available. Uh, me, I mean, I'll go through what I was doing. I was going to write up the uh, O'Reilly stuff. I'd written up the book dash service, but I sort of put it, I mean, it's written, but it's really hasn't been published. Um, and then um, I hyped up the services in the mid pen post where I got overquoted in an article that I think I shared with everybody. That's a good article. You know, I was a, I, I said way too much, but that's no, usually. No, it was right. great. It was good. Really good. I tried to get everything in. It was like being on debate team where you try to get all the service, you know, everything itemized. <laughs> it was good. It was really good. All right. So, but I'm not the only one on the services subcommittee, Regina and Julie. 
putting you on the spot. I don't know that I have anything to add at this point. Um, I think we did mention, I think um, Pianca brought up a very good point in the meeting that uh, we might want to try and match the opening of Woodland with the school opening next school year. Because if, you know, a, a part of it, a big part of it is for the school kids to stay there and either wait for a pickup or have some activities, then that might be a good timing to shoot for. And can you imagine how much more tutoring kids are going to need? Exactly. Uh, yeah, we're all behind this year. So it's pretty bad. It would be a stake in the ground. That's right. We talked about that, making that a stake in the ground to uh, provide that service. And even though it sounds hokey in a way that, you know, oh my God, Woodland's just there for the kids. But my God, Woodland's there for the kids. That's huge. <laughs> I mean, that's really a community service that people want. And back to the political thing, Steve and Rose, I mean, you're hearing it. When's Woodland going to be open? Every time we've got public speaking, they're not going to stop. You know, I support you. You know, we're not going to force the county to do anything stupid. I mean, you've got to take care of your people. That's all there is to it. But I just, you know, we just need to show the flag in a sense and get stuff rolled out when we can even if it's like rolling out the biblio truck for, I don't know, juice boxes for everybody. Freddie, never mind. Uh, Pierre's hired. <laughs> <laughs> I can never get the straws in there. It's a challenge, I know. Um, no, we're all anxious to get Woodland open and you know, it's just a matter of when's when's the right time, right? And when when is it safest, and when can we provide the services that we need? And you know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna do it as soon as as soon as it's it's humanly possible. Um, that's that's our goal. But it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna depend on some factors that are kind of out of our control. So we'll just do the best that we can. And you know, I appreciate all the support for Woodland. It, it's great to hear. Um, and we'll we'll just do the best we can. Well, we want to make sure that we help you, but we don't want to get in your way. I mean, let's be clear. We I appreciate we're here that. To help and advise, but we're not here to tell you how to do it. But, it. but except for you, Peter. except for me, <laughs> and if you accept my three-step plan, we'll be okay. <laughs> we want you to keep your people out there vaccinating. Helping that vaccination. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, that's the thing, right? That, that's got to be the most important thing right now, because that's what's going to get us back to normal the, the quickest, right? So exactly. Um, so it's great that the county's doing it. And, we, you know, we're, we're not trying to, to point the finger at them in, in any way, shape or form. You know, we're just we're just excited to be able to help and, and, and make a, a positive contribution and, and get over this as quickly as possible. So that's the most important thing. So that's right. We're, we're, we support you on that. Absolutely. It's been a year since the commission went virtual, I just realized. Our last meeting, I think, was March of last year. Oh, my God. I think you're right. You're yeah. right. It was wow. uh, it, the picture of you and our mayor and Jamie <laughs> going over the new woodland schema that Steve's going to implement. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I don't have to sign in blood or anything, do I? <laughs> no. It, not on... Uh, not on, I, I almost said not on Zillow, but we're not on Zillow, are we? We're on Rinse. Nope. Anyway, next, air, <laughs> the Awareness Subcommittee. Awareness Subcommittee, okay. Regenia, do you want to talk about the Talon? Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> That's the uh, Los Altos High School uh, newspaper. So I wrote up a proposal based on all the information that I've collected, uh, passed it on to Freddie, and I also wanted Rose to take a look at it. It has a breakdown on the cost. Um, it explains there are two different versions of the talent, both online and print issue. And uh, it even has a mock-up of uh, what it could look like. Uh, thanks for Cindy's input. So, um, we're probably going to try and uh, propose it to Lolly in May. That's our timeline. And then see what they think and uh, if they would consider sponsoring it. 
Um, I don't think we're pressed for time because usually summer is kind of slow with the high school. So we still have plenty of time before they start maybe in September. Right. And this is a really nice different demographic than the town crier would normally reach. Um, that, you know, would entice the uh, high school kids to use some of the services that the library has that they may not be aware of, which is the whole point of the awareness subcommittee. So that was a great find. Carol, do you want to talk about um, PSAs? We have, we have an opportunity now, uh, and Rose is going to send us some uh, PDFs to, to use for the PSAs. Okay, well, I, I had already contacted uh, the television station, Channel 15, the Foothill College radio station, and the Kiwanis. And I have since contacted the marketing department of Foothill College because there is no school paper. They don't, they don't have what, they used to have a journalism program. They don't have that anymore. But Vanessa Smith is the marketing person and she said they would be happy to put out uh, PSAs for us. Super. And that's so, what that is. So we have four uh, good sites for PSAs. Great. And I was thinking that the Bull Caldwell event should definitely be a PSA and the Robert Sapolsky event, the whole Distinguished Author, Author series, as well as speaking volumes should, they're just naturals for these PSAs. So. Yeah, well, because also, because through the marketing department, we'll be reaching uh, not just the students, we'll be reaching the staff. And the faculty, yeah. And, yeah, and the, well, the faculty or staff, and uh, things that might not interest the students would interest uh, the more mature, recipients of our news. Yeah, so these are great. I, I think those two series are just perfect for the PSAs. So I think that's how we should launch the PSAs. And um, anyway, that's exciting. We're going to do our um, our April ad. Ooh, I kind of need to get that to you tomorrow. <laughs> um, it's going to be on ABC Mouse. And then May will be uh, universal class and um so always looking for ideas if anybody has ideas on a service they think should be the focus of uh one of the lolly ads please let us know okay that's it for oh and, and a quick note yeah. uh 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 for mid peninsula post uh, because pa also oh, yes. need on yeah. the contact so um turns out that they're nice enough that they could add something called a bulletin on their online paper and we could do sort of like a public announcement on that bulletin so we don't have to necessarily get funded and pay for the ad we can just put something up there free of charge great why don't we try sending them one of the, like one of the uh, the ball called well richard and the uh, robert sapolsky and see okay. what we do with it. Yeah, they, they have a limitation on number of words and things like that. So we could try and trim it and see if that would, yeah, that, that's a great idea. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So that's five PSA outlets and fantastic. Okay. On the Foothill College outlet, are you, did you, uh, are you doing the FM station? It is an FM station, isn't it? Yeah, no, only, I mean, is that, the, is that what you were talking about? Is the Foothill Radio or? Right, it's K-F-M-K-S-K-F-J-C. That's a big, that's a big outlet. Yeah, that's, that's a really that's good outlet. station. And it's a music station. Oh, yeah, no, I know it. I've got. <laughs> well, maybe the, uh, uh, announcements need to be tailored to that particular audience oh that'll be fine that's a good that's a good station yeah. we have to do a script there so you know diane marketing the the county library marketing person has to approve the script but basically if we take the script from 
the announcement or you know or from the ad and it's 30 seconds that's what we'll be able to get on the psa on the radio station yeah so. okay so we're done we're done uh, there's a hand up oh sorry cindy thank you so the ad um that you need to cut down that was actually written by diane or diane's group so um, whatever you do to modify it, I'm sure she's going to approve it because she wrote it. Okay, great. Okay, super. Thank you. Cool. Um, outside of that, uh, the only thing I was going to, one more thing, you should probably do a focus on the O'Reilly books. They're very, uh, they're popular in geekdom and the library offers them for free. What O'Reilly books are you talking about? I'll, I'll follow up offline, but they, it's a whole series of educational books for uh, computing that's like top notch. It's amazingly good. You mean it's not Bill O'Reilly from no, Fort it's, Fort no, no, it's Tim O'Reilly. <laughs> like, well, you I mean actually did a deal specific. with him. You I actually specific. <laughs> I did a deal with this guy. Okay. Like back in the when was it? it late eighties early 90s look at me now look at him <laughs> okay <laughs> i mean you know no the right o'reilly hi rose <laughs> i just want to actually compliment the awareness subcommittee because before i went on maternity leave and after coming back from my perspective you guys have done a really amazing job getting the library programs and services out there because um as Freddie knows, before I went, we just started with the ad that Lolly funded, and now our library programs are at so many outlets and so many places. So, thank you so much. Um, you know, that's one of the things we really try to improve on from the library perspective as librarians, um, and having your assistance um, is really appreciated. So, um, there's been the tremendous growth. Isn't it great when you have two wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people on your subcommittee? <laughs> 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 what does that mean for the rest of us no no i am so happy and and melvin also i'm so happy this year i i just could not be happier with my subcommittees it's just so all right fun. so let's talk futures sure um the future subcommittee has a standing meeting on Fridays at one o'clock, you know, once a month. Uh, Rose was kind enough to set up a series and we'll have to talk with her about which ones we'll actually attend. Uh, our next one is actually this um, tomorrow. And unfortunately, I just realized I'll be standing in line for my first vaccine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the other, um, so, so Yang and Julie can go ahead without me. We actually had a really good session uh, last month. Uh, Cindy was kind enough to join us and help us get up to speed on um, the, uh, the last uh, effort around redevelopment. So we had proper context and data and information. Uh, we have to do some thinking as to how we would craft a path uh, towards reconstituting that effort um, to getting to um, a redevelopment bond initiative. Um, the uh, situation is different now than before, so I think uh, I and my fellow subcommittee members have got to kind of think this thing through a little bit before we can come back to the full library commission and say this is where our, our, our thinking is. So that's the main thing that we're focused on right now is to figure out what that path and timeline would look like. Um, you know, with Cindy's guidance, it seems like um, a good um, goal for us is to target 2024 election. Uh, 2022 just doesn't make sense. It's too compressed. And I think there's going to be some... Uh, selling involved to kind of get the city council um, on board to support this. So, um, I, as I said, there's uh, plenty of work to be done there. Uh, on the um, self-service library front, uh, no progress report just yet. Um, 
uh, Brian did give us uh, some documents that we need to wade through. And Ying and Jilly, if you want to kind of uh, talk a little bit about uh, where your heads are at, uh, I'm sure the rest of the commission would be happy to hear it. I think Ying had to drop off. Yeah. I don't see her. So I'm, this is Julie, I'm, and then I apologize, my head, my head is at, uh, with regard to what? The, uh, the future subcommittee and our deliverables around uh, a timeline towards getting to a redevelopment effort, as well as uh, self-service, which is one of the uh, threads that we signed up for, uh, particularly around the Woodland Branch. Yeah, so so from my perspective, I would love to, to start talking about self-service ASAP, especially since we aren't opening the Woodland branch, apparently due to lack of staff. So it seems like that should move to the top of the list and perhaps be discussed in the larger group very soon. Um, the other one, um, you know, I'm very much an advocate, uh, but I realize it's going to be a big lift. So um, I'm a bit of a wait and see on that um, and appreciate the guidance of other people who are far more uh, knowledgeable with respect to those sorts of things than I. So thoughts about that? <laughs> Yeah, I think we can uh, uh, talk about it. You uh, and perhaps, if you decide to go ahead with tomorrow's call, can discuss where we need to take the service. Uh, certainly, there's some data to gather, as well as uh, some uh, some thinking as to how we would go about doing that at Woodland. Okay, um, as I said, if you guys want to go ahead, please do so. Otherwise, uh, I would recommend that we defer until the following week to meet. So Pierre, that's uh, the future subcommittee. Thanks. Uh, any questions, comments? Um, I have a question, but I'm just gonna ask you, Melvin, would it just be better for for me to wait with my questions until next month when we, when you maybe have more to talk about, when you explain mm -hmm. self-service a little bit more to us, should I hold my questions until next month? That's probably advisable. Okay, thanks. I sent the futures uh, subcommittee cards uh, from Orange Boy. It was a study done, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but these little demographic cards that uh, were done maybe 10 years ago, uh, mainly out of interest. So it was a time when the library was actually paying consultants to figure out whether they are using landlines or cell phones. If you guys can live back 10 years ago. But anyway, a study was done. I scanned these cards. They were inter mildly interesting from a demographic standpoint as to how they segmented the population and uh, the future subcommittee, you know, may or may not find it usable. That's all I got. I'll make it easy on the work plan subcommittee. You already saw it, library.bedard.com. No advertising yet. <laughs> And with that, uh, we go to the next item. If there's no, any questions? What is the next item? Uh, potential future agenda items. And I do have a question. Jamie, can you report back on the Brown Act question from last week, last commission meeting? I will be able to do that. I'm hoping to hear back shortly. Um, and so I should be able to share something um, within the next week or so. Okay, thank you. I'm just looking at the minutes as to uh, from the previous week. And we're gonna get the, and Cindy's gonna be kind enough to do the uh, history for us. Next, next time, yes. Next time. 
I mean, the only thing I'd want to talk about, if you know, or as an agenda item, I, I think, and this is with the Brown Act too. I think that we as a team need to meet more if we're going to work on a specific goal. I.e., if we're going to, you know, if we decide to put our focus on getting woodland to wherever we need to get woodland, then we may need to get more focus on that and share ideas as a whole team as opposed to a subcommittee framework. We'll know more about that with the Brown Act stuff, but that's my only comment. I know you had suggested a study session would be a way to do that. Um, perhaps, um, you know, we, and, and I mean, I think it's important to have the input from everybody because, um, you know, you, that's the whole point of having a commission is to get everybody's ideas. And uh, we need to be able to talk about projects. There's so much overlap, you know, futures, services. I mean, services and awareness go hand in hand. Um, fortunately, Virginia is on awarenesses, awareness and services. So, you know, I don't know what kind of Brown Act <laughs> separation she's supposed to do in her frontal lobe, but, um, but she has the knowledge so she can inform awareness about what services could use some advertising, for example. But there's, there are issues that we should talk about as a group and, you know, trying to do it in, you know, once a month, you know, when everybody's talking about everything doesn't give us a chance to just focus in on one thing. And it shouldn't just be Woodland. It should be other projects, you know, also. Every, everybody ought to have their own project that we take turns on. So on that note, because um, I will, um, I should have clarification at least on the functionality between the subcommittees, but as you're talking about this, um, the commission can absolutely schedule, um, as Pierre mentioned, uh, a study session or a special meeting that has a specific topic that um, now with that, the, a regularly scheduled meeting, um, it's required to be posted 72 hours in advance. Um, obviously, a special meeting um, can be 24 hours in advance and it can happen anytime, not just at your regularly scheduled time. And so that is another option that you can select a specific topic that the whole group wants to focus on. And that is absolutely something that we can easily do as well. It would just be a matter of scheduling a time that everyone that works with everyone's schedule and then obviously selecting what that topic what would be. Right. But what do we need to do to make that decision? Do we need to meet as a team and vote on it or meet as a commission and vote on that decision? Or is this something that, you know, a couple of us decide, I mean, how does that work? No, absolutely. As far as, and I think it would be similar process for, um, a, to get things on and it, or be an agenda item, there should be, um, at least three commissioners that, would um, want to have that happen and then we can definitely move forward with that. So can I move that we schedule an unspecified special meeting at a future time? I'll second that. <laughs> That's a little vague. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, having not decided a time yet. I mean, I'm, I'm asking the question, Jamie, is that something we can do? No, absolutely. And so the, what we can do, um, again, because we obviously we meet on a regular basis. And at, at this point, there's quite a few topics, as you guys have mentioned, that overlap between many of your subcommittees. Um, for the special meeting, um, you might want to, and even too for the study session, you don't want to overload yourself. And so you want to make sure that you have that focus point um, for the meeting. Um, but let's say down 
the, the line and not necessarily during one of our regularly scheduled meetings, let's say that it was identified that you needed to, I can definitely, I as the liaison can reach out and if there is um, interest by at least three commissioners, we can work to schedule something and we don't necessarily have to do that directly here either. Oh, okay. So, cool. Um, we don't have to wait for your regularly scheduled meeting to say, okay, we need an, another meeting. Um, we can definitely do that in between and we can schedule that and I can work to post that. And, um, but again, um, I would be the one as the liaison to make sure that we have at least the interest of um, three commissioners to, to do that. And you can do the logistics of figuring out time frames that work. And yep, absolutely. Noticing it, et cetera, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, so we don't need have to, put to it decide open. that now, um, I guess, is the big thing. So if there isn't a, you know, a strong driver to do something now, um, if it is identified that once uh, a certain topic, whether it is um, from the futures or awareness, if there is a topic that needs to be discussed, I hear from three commissioners and then we can schedule it from there. Well, I mean, we could do that. We could do it now. It, it's got to be about Woodland. Um, and I'm certainly have interest in doing a study session on Woodland. I don't know the specifics, but uh, we have enough of our constituents demanding it, quite honestly. What are we going to focus on on Woodland? So, I mean, I think it's important that we understand what we're going to talk about so that we're prepared. Yep. And the other thing as well, too. Um, are we going to talk about the expansion? Mm, I mean, what are we going to talk about? I th I, I'll give you my opinion for what it's worth. And I think it needs to be multifaceted. You have to look at it uh, from the immediate. What do we do? you know, what can the county do? And that's really up to Rose and what Steve does immediately to bring some kind of services coming out of there. I think there's a need for that. I well, mean, that's my opinion. I agree, but I, you know, but I just, you know, I think we're overstepping ourselves. I mean, that's, that's their, that's their bailiwick. Oh, I know. I, I'm saying, I'm totally get that. And, but then, I mean, and, and, but we're not going to, we can't mess with that, right, at we all. We cannot mess with that. So why but, are we meeting about that? Well, I'm saying. <laughs> why would we meet about something that uh, we have no control over? And that they're doing the best they can. I mean, they're going to open it when they, as soon as they can. I just don't see that that would be, not only yeah. do I not think that would be productive, I don't think it would be helpful. No, you're right. I agree. I, and I, I can see now the way it's viewed, it would not be helpful. Or I can see where you're viewing it. I was looking, all I'm saying is that there's more, it's not just a, a, you know, move to the end product right away. That's all I'm saying. But I get what you're saying. Yeah, I just don't think that's our place. Well, suggest, I mean, it, what, in your opinion, what do you think? What? I mean, what, how would you structure it? I like, what's your. For take? Woodland to talk about Woodland. Um, I mean, to me, the issues that, that are on the table for Woodland at the moment that we have any, um, that we are discussing as a library commission are uh, ways to make that library more functional for an adult and child, adult and child users at the same time, okay? And, and to address gaps that we currently have within the main library, a lack of meeting space, a lack yeah. of team space, a lack of areas where people can just work. Um, so um, that that actually does address something. If we can do that near term, that kind of takes the pressure off of a large redeveloped library and make, gives us the chance to essentially think about what that redeveloped library really should focus on. Uh, the other thing is we know we have an issue with getting Woodland back up and running uh, given a staff situation, so we ought to explore um, 
what are some things that might be considered in terms of self-service and what are those things make sense or not within the timeline that we're talking about. That makes total sense. And it all has to do with Woodland. Absolutely. Absolutely. So those could be topics for us to talk about in a study, you know, special session or whatever you, you want to call it that's focused on Woodland that's in our purview. Yes. So we all, do we all want to do that? Okay. It, yeah. it makes sense, but I know from my perspective, I don't think I have enough information to share regarding self-service yet. So I don't I, think we're at a point yet. So wh what do you think though, Melvin, maybe at the end of May? Well, you know, um, it's uh, what, April right now? Yeah, I think with uh, two months, we can certainly start doing some digging and maybe within the future subcommittee, we can discuss who goes and tackles what because we haven't done that yet. And uh, we, all we have right now is the document from Bryant. We haven't gone off and tried to do any sort of independent data collection. And I think we need to do that. And this is Julie, I agree. I mean, my understanding is that in Minnesota, there are counties that are developing this as well as in Ventura County. Yeah, so I think we have some resources there and perhaps people that we can talk to. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's find out what the best practices are and which ones might be appropriate. And so do you want to just shoot for the end of May? Maybe? Yeah, we should put something yeah. on, on the calendar so that way we have something, something to shoot for, yeah. Yes. Um, the All other right. thing I was going to suggest is um, we do have our regularly scheduled meeting at the beginning of May. We can also do a check in there to see where we fall. And then if it does look like that time frame is going to work, we can look at scheduling that at our next regularly scheduled meeting, unless it's the group wants to set something now. You want to just set a tentative date now, so we so we have something on our calendars to shoot for, and then if we decide it's premature, we can re, we can always reschedule. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. What about the week of the twenty fourth of May? Like the twenty fifth is Tuesday. The twenty seventh is Thursday. So I know my husband's birthday is on the 25th and it's always around Labor Day or uh, not Labor Day, but um, Memorial, Day. Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Do we know when that is? Yeah, that's uh, Monday the 31st. Yeah, Monday the 31st. Your husband's birthday is Tuesday the 25th. We could do, do you want to try for Thursday at 6.30? The 27th? Yeah, I, I'm okay with that. My experience is just that people usually take a long weekend around that time. Um, in this day and age? Well, <laughs> camping. <laughs> camping, okay. Camping, okay. Well, <laughs> but that's fine. I mean, that, that, that works for me. I don't... Earlier on the 20th. Well, we could do it on the 20th. What do you think? Yeah. The 20th works for me better than later. Okay. Yep, that works. Okay. Melvin? I don't have anything on my calendar right now, so let's just lock it in. The 20th at 6.30? 20th at 6.30. Okay. Okay. Uh, so six, special session, 6.30. And it's going to be limited to just three commission members, correct? Commissioner. Huh? No. Full no? session. Oh, cool. It's for all of us. That's why we need it. That's good. Yeah, it's for all of us. And Steve, I know you're listening. You are more than welcome to join us. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to clear some stuff on my calendar, but yeah, I'll be <laughs> <laughs> all right any other potential future Ro rose if you possibly can i i don't want to impose though 
okay? But your inside is. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> and Olive can come too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, fabulous. Okay, we're going to stare at Olive for the rest of the <laughs> All right, any future items? Others? With that, I adjourn this meeting, I guess. Okay. All right. Nothing else we adjourn? Yes. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.